Here I'm going to show you how to replace an old bay window roof with a new custom made fiberglass roof. There's actually quite a lot wrong with this one which makes it an ideal example to show you so hopefully yours will be much easier to work with than this one. This is actually a lead roof that has been repaired multiple times and has now come to the end of the road repair wise. It's a job done for a landlord who is very reluctant to spend any money on it. Firstly, disconnect any gutter that may be fouling your access. This is normally just a matter of unclipping any joints or unions with your hands and then sliding out the length of guttering. Next, knock up or remove the bottom row of tiles if present. As you can see, the top of the fascia is badly rotten and really needs replacing. But as the landlord has said there is no money available for this, I will simply show you the sensible way around this problem. Obviously, if this is your own job, you can replace it now or do it at a later stage. Now unscrew any gutter brackets in the way or lever them off gently with a flat pry bar as shown here. Next remove any old roof covering, cutting it up into smaller pieces makes it easier to lift and dispose of. Remove any other rubbish you might find until you get back to the bare wood underneath. If you are keeping the original tongue and groove decking, which you can if the wood isn't rotten, screw down through the tongue and groove into the rafters underneath, as the original nails may fail in the future. I tend to use screws rather than nails as this will impact a lot less on any ceilings that sit underneath rather than hammering in very large nails. To see how to strip and insulate a roof such as this, visit fixmyroof.co.uk. However, we're not doing that in this case, so we'll get back on with the video. Back on our job, there is no money available for insulation. So here we are at the sterling board fitting stage. If it's a full replacement of the decking, then I would recommend 18mm sterling board. If you're capping over good wood, then use something like 10 or 11mm sterling board. If possible, just place the sterling board on top and in position. By popping your head underneath, mark any angles or cuts with a pencil. Here on this multi-part bay, there are quite a few, so just work your way around and just keep marking. Now flip the sterling board over and join up any marks with a straight edge and a pencil ready for cutting. Once cut, finally adjust the decking so that mitres line up properly with any trims underneath. Here again I screw rather than nail the new decking into the joists, driving all the screws 1-2mm to two millimeters into the sterling so that no screw sits above the face of the wood. Now with the new roof in place, we can measure up for some new drip trims. You can set the height of the drip simply by cutting it with some tin snips and here I'm using an AT195 external angle trim. Starting at one side, mark your first cut up against any wall or upstand with a pencil like this and again just cut it with a set of tin snips. Next, with your new cut edge abutting the wall or upstand, Mark the next angle for cutting with a pencil and snip it again. Either nail it into place with galvanised clout headed nails or use PU adhesive. My personal choice is nails because working at close quarters with trims and PU adhesive can lead to bumping into it and moving it if it's not mechanically fixed down. If you are nailing, don't hammer the nails all the way in until you are 100% happy with the finish. Place on another section of trim, butt up the edges again so they sit together nicely and keep marking and cutting in the same fashion. It's always nice to mark and cut one trim where it meets another as shown here. This is purely for aesthetic reasons only. It may not be important two stories up but if your roof is at low level and possibly visible from an open window, you might want to do this just to make it look nice. When all the cuts on the mitre joints look right, 
secure the trims into place again without bashing the nails home. Now it's just a matter of working your way around repeating the process until the whole bay roof drip trim is pinned into position. Once everything is in place you can nail the trims down fuller and put in the rest of the nails. Our nail mar trims about every 6 inches or 120 millimeters but on such a small roof it's really not that important. Now it's time to form your upstand onto the rear fascia. This will normally be done with a D260 wall fillet, an AT195 internal trim or as shown in this case an AT195 external trim. On a very small roof like this there is no real need to worry too much about expansion gaps. I would simply allow something like 10 millimeters behind the trim and up against the upstand. Once the wall fillet or upstand is complete nail or PU adhesive it into position ready for taping the joints but do not fix it into the rotten fascia behind as this will not allow it to be replaced at a later stage without damaging the fiberglass roof. Here you can see that I've taped the joints. On a small roof like this good quality masking tape or duct tape is quite acceptable. On a larger project 4 inch or 100 millimeter fiberglass bandage should be used instead to strengthen the joints. Now clean all the trims with acetone and a clean rag ready for the matting and resin. This removes any grease or contaminants so that the resin bonds properly. If you have any smooth bits on your trims give them a light sanding with 80 grade grit paper. Having measured the roof cut the fiberglass matting. I like to use 450 gram as this is what I use on the majority of my projects. Simply measure, mark and cut with a decent set of household scissors. Here you can see I've laid the matting in runs going from front to back and overlapping at the joints by 75 millimeters or thereabouts. At the edges of the drip trims I've overhung the matting by about 10 millimeters. This will help to protect the face of the trims from dripping resin. The tools and the wood are simply ballast to stop the matting from moving or blowing off. At the rear upstand against the fascia I've allowed enough return so any edges of matting are covered by the roof tiles when they go back on. Again for a nice aesthetic finish rip the edges of any overlapping joints. This will stop the appearance of visible lines when the roof is finished. Simply pull at the edge of the matting firmly and it will break away. Before you mix any resin lay out all of your equipment first so that it's ready and on hand. The most important being safety goggles. Never use any hardener or resin or top coat without full wrap around eye protection. Here I'm adding catalyst or hardener to the resin. An on screen guide will follow shortly as to the recommended amounts but if you're new to fiberglassing never mix up more than 4 litres at a time especially on a small roof like this. I like to use a syringe to add my catalyst. I find it can squirt the hardener underneath the surface of the resin making it faster and easier to mix. Here are the drying times and suggested catalyst amount for different temperatures. This and other information is available for download via the website fixmyroof.co.uk. Just search for catalyst or hardener in the top search bar on the home page. Use any thermometer you like but if you use a laser thermometer it makes quick measurements very easy. I've been doing this a long time now so I can almost tell just by touching the decking with my hand but I don't recommend you do the same. My advice on resin application on a small roof is to pour it on top about a half a litre at a time. When you move the resin about with the roller it will travel through the matting quite easily. There really is no need to wet the deck underneath on a small roof like this. Use the brush with a jabbing motion to press the wet matting into any details like tricky corners. But use the roller whenever possible as this moves around the resin quite easily and pushes out any air bubbles that may get trapped. I would suggest on nearly all fiberglass roofs using standard 450 gram matting 
you should use 2 litres of resin per square metre as a covering guide. This seems to give an ideal covering thickness, helps to stop air bubbles forming and pinholes caused by dry spots. Because we went over the drip trims earlier with the matting, we can simply roll around the edges without fear of too many drips. Upstands and verticals can be done by rolling any resin into the corner and then uphill. Next cut some matting patches to wet up with any remaining resin so that we can strengthen and waterproof the mitre joints on the drip trims. Using the 2 inch brush with the same jabbing motion as earlier, poke the patches underneath all of the mitres as shown here. This is now your roof finished and it's just a matter of waiting for it to harden. If you time it so the resin has cured to touch dry and just beyond the waxy surface feel that it gets, trimming the edges with a sharp knife will be very easy indeed. If it hardens off too much it can still be done but a more robust two-handed approach will be required. Now wait until the surface is hard enough to sand without fluffing up or blocking the grit or sander. Lightly sand off any high spots or rough edges on the new roof. This isn't necessary for any other reason than to give a nice finish, as long as you apply the top coat in under the first 24 hours. Once sanded, brush the dust and we're ready for the top coat or colour. The two most common choices being light grey which looks a lot like seasoned lead and dark grey which has the look of new bossed lead. Temperature will dictate how far and how easily your coloured top coat will spread. In warmer weather the top coat is slightly runnier so one litre of colour will probably cover somewhere between two and three square metres. Don't mix too much at once however and refer to the drying times on fixmyroof.co.uk if in any doubt. Using the same technique as with the resin, deposit about a quarter of a litre of colour onto the bay and work it with the roller, using the brush to finish any details. The roller can also be used on the edge of the drip trims and will leave a superior finish to that of the brush. And here is the roof just finished. Don't worry about the overly shiny appearance and the fact that you can see the matting underneath. This will quickly fade to a much nicer finish. Pictured here just 20 minutes later, you can already see how much the top coat hardens and adapts a much smoother, nicer look. Again, here viewed from the other angle, with the gutter brackets and gutter now holding the fiberglass upstand securely back against the wooden fascia underneath. And here is the completed roof. I've removed some of the ladder staging so that you can better see the look of the bay from the ground. Obviously the depth of the drip trim can be anything you want it to be just by cutting it with a sharp pair of tin snips when you're laying the trims in the first place. I think a good fiberglass roof is probably one of the best options on the market these days and I have yet to have one leak or fail in any way in the many, many years I've been doing it. Happy fiberglassing! For more information on fiberglassing, a gallery of what can be achieved with fiberglassing in bay windows and other roofs, and links to good quality cheap resins and materials for pricing up your project, visit fixmyroof.co.uk. Thank you. Well, once again that brings another project to an end. I hope this video has helped in some way and thanks for watching.